what is happening my friends welcome to another great episode of the errington gavin show this is the show your go-to spot for sharp insights bold opinions and unfiltered takes on the biggest stories of the day whether it's politics sports pop culture or the latest buzz we're diving deep and keeping it real so kick back stay informed and get ready to join the conversation my friends how's everybody feeling this evening uh hope you all are having a had a great day um i hope you all uh are are healthy and uh uh i don't know just is just feeling good i i myself am in such a great place i'm always in a really a great space i'm, I'm you know a little tired cuz your boy has been literally all around the place um i've been doing my part working uh, a lot doing that being that it's a, a election season is keeping me extra busy. Um, I've moderated some uh, local events in in the in the hometown uh, area. I've uh, uh, you know I'm interviewing a lot of candidates, uh, current officials as well, but interviewing a lot of candidates. Um, what else? What else? Oh, I, I did a thing over the weekend. I had the opportunity to co-host a local uh parade a festival parade so in suffolk virginia uh they have uh they have they're they're on their way to having their 46th annual suffolk peanut festival right and it's just there's a long history of like you know peanut farmers and factories in the city of suffolk virginia beautiful beautiful city by the way uh one of the largest cities uh landmass wise they have a lot of land they consider it like the big little city <laughs> the the or the little big city i forgot how they uh, placed it but um i was um i had the opportunity to host their uh, uh parade portion of that festival so they have a parade that they do that they'll do in downtown suffolk and um and i had the opportunity to to, to put my al roker hat on <laughs> <laughs> okay um i want to thank uh sky for tv for giving me the opportunity to do so uh, my co-host was awesome miss Teresa earls uh she was amazing she's actually the director of tourism for the city of suffolk and um it was just great seeing seeing all the uh uh, uh everyone within the community coming together i mean i got there early in the morning because i think the parade started around like 10 and i got there uh, around like 8 30 and it was already tons of people in the in the uh, uh the crowd like already already there downtown just setting you know getting their lawn chairs and and uh getting a good seat and a good spot and i'm just like whoa this is really serious because i'm, I'm in chesapeake and suffolk is not far from me but i have a lot of friends in the suffolk area and they always talk so highly about it and um and it was awesome i actually sh uh, shared some photos on the uh instagram page at, at, at the errington gavin show so be sure to check that out and like it as well. Also, follow, you know, follow us on um, our social medias. Uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. Um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Our Smooth Club Media, as well as on Rumble at the Errington Gavin Show. And I truly appreciate that. Um, but we had we had a great time. It was, it, the weather was perfect. Um, uh, we, I mean, we had great chemistry. It was our first time meeting in person that day. Um, and it was just, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome from the beginning to the end. And I'm like, okay, okay, Arrington, I see you. So I say all that to say your boy's been busy. The eyes wouldn't stop twitching. Um, so I've been trying to get some, you know, plenty of rest. Um, I'm, I'm working with some of the, uh, the, the, the candidates in the area, uh, just giving my two cents. Um, I'm working with a group that is encouraging young voters to get out there and vote because I talk about it all the time here on this show when i do have the the time it's so important to vote i understand you feel mistreated and misled and lied to many a times i understand look i'm the same way i get tired of hearing uh politicians giving us the same old narrative and never owning up to their mistakes also never uh backing what they preach right they do a lot to just get those votes and then once they have the position it's like they don't do you know jack squad and i understand but just remember that your vote is your voice okay if you tend to have issues within your community and you see something wrong say something okay say something your vote is a part of you saying something but also uh, stay involved with your local council 
stay involved with your uh with all your community groups within your area get involved you know start typing in your local city um uh city's website see who exactly is on your council get their uh emails get their contact information if you have an issue boom send them an email shoot them a call that's how you got to keep them keep their foot to the fire because then you're just stuck with a lot of people winning re-elections non-stop and they really don't have to do anything they go maybe to like three spots most of the time it's people that are fans of them you know in their community and people that will always back them they don't go into the parts where most likely they're not gonna they know that they're not gonna own any votes they're not gonna try and sway them or or uh or speak with people on all sides of the aisle they don't do that look it's corruption in politics it's 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 the you know it's the good old boy system on the local level and state and federal level so uh just get out there vote um, I'm excited. I'm working with a, a group of young individuals that are very passionate about their community, very passionate about sh- spreading uh, change, excuse me, changing the narrative when it comes to young votes. Uh, we're hitting the age bracket from 18 and eh, to 35. Uh, and I think now is the time. I think this is a, an amazing election where a lot of people are getting involved. I was uh, talking not too long ago with a friend of mine. I'm um, actually I was talking to her yesterday. Uh, uh, if she had um, gone out to vote, and I was telling her, yeah, my wife and I, we, we, uh, we voted on the exact on the, the very first day when early voting first started. We got to our registrar's office the first day. It was a line wrapped around the building, but we were like, hey, look, we're here. We got to do it. Let's come on. Let's get out the way. Um, and and it was it was it was very. I was excited to see a lot of people in that line because I don't know. It's just early voting. You never see as huge of a crowd, at least in my my hometown uh you never see a huge line of people waiting you know to to vote early you usually see the lines on election day there's a lot of people that love to go on election day um or you know just just a little bit later on in the, during early voting season but it's every time i go it's like a line wrapped around i was helping my dad out run run some errands and i said well let me go drive you to the register's office because i had to take him to the city hall anyway and it was a line wrapped around uh the the building i'm like whoa how many days has it been since early voting so it's a very impactful election so just be alarmed be aware and make sure you are registered make sure your friends and family are registered and uh uh yeah just make sure you're registered to vote so let's see what we got on tap for you within this hour because you are tuning into the errington gavin show as i mentioned before thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen in and have a conversation with your boy here uh, we drop new episodes weeknights, okay? Weeknights available on all uh, digital and streaming platforms. I've mentioned YouTube and Rumble. You can listen to this program um, wherever you get your podcast. You can also listen to this program on our radio affiliate, WDJY 99.1 FM, Straight Talk out of Dallas, Georgia. Um, Monday through Fridays at 11 p.m. as well as WDJYFM.com. Uh, multiple ways you can tune into the program and uh can can stay up to speed and engage uh with us but um let's see what we have on tap for you today's show we're going to talk a little bit about um let's see who do we have here i guess you can you can sway this in the category of diddy all the issues happening with with diddy sean diddy combs um his infamous uh uh events and freak off parties and all this other stuff and a lot of people are saying okay now we're waiting for the names who else might have been involved in this scheme of that he was involved in who who else because they're they already know that they're it's the rich and famous it's the 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 almighty powerful individuals and influencers that are most likely going to have some connections with diddy so there's a former uh well i guess she's still a continue to sing but r&b singer jaguar Wright, she claims there's other powerful individuals that she considers monsters and we will tap in and see who she talking about um also a comedian receives massive backlash after uh sharing making a a passing of a uh beloved public figure and humanitarian he he brings it back to politics and so he's getting some heat about that. Um, also, a Republican election denier sentenced to nine years in prison. So we're going to tap into that as well. And then also the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. Oh, he vetoes 
a, a black reparations bill. And a lot of people are pretty PO'd about it. And we're going to talk about that later on in the program. Before we move forward, I always have to acknowledge some of our proud supporters of the Arrington Gavin show, like our friends over at Ingenious Gin. Ingenious Gin, and for all you uh, gin connoisseurs and or gin explorers out there, look, this is an amazing, amazing spirit. It has a unique spin of the original gin. Uh, it's a rose gold complexion, very smooth. You can drink it on the rocks. You can drink it neat. You can have it in a mix in the cocktail. It's quite tasty. And I myself am a bourbon and whiskey guy. There's only one gin that I'll drink, and that is Ingenious Gin. Again, it is black owned and veteran owned. And here on this program, we support our veterans. We also promote uh, promote black owned businesses and small businesses. So do me a favor, go to your local spirit or ABC stores and go check them out. Find, find your, grab yourself a bottle. If you can't find them, you can go online to www.ingeniusgen.com. Again, that's www.ingeniusgen.com. If you happen to be watching this episode right now, I have provided a, a 20% off discount code at the bottom of the screen. So be sure to jot down that code. And when you go to check out, you can put that in. And you'll receive 20% off your purchase. Again, Ingenious Gen. The Gin for Thinkers, do me a favor, my friends, make sure to drink responsibly. Please make sure to drink responsibly, but it is quite tasty. Uh, we're going to head to a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You are listening to The Arrington Gavin Show. You know, just like a winning team evolves throughout the season, so does your beard. I'm Arrington Gavin, proud CEO of Rugged Evolution Beard Care. With our premium oils, balms, and grooming tools, it's everything you need to level up your beard game. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a rookie, Rugged Evolution is the new smooth. Order now and dominate the beard game like never before. Rugged Evolution Beard Care, because every beard deserves to be legendary. What's happening, my friends? Welcome back to the Arrington Gavin Show. You know, like we always like to do and get it started, we always have to bring up our fun fact of the day here. So stand by. Check this out. Our fun fact today is that, did you guys know chocolate is kind of a fruit? So the last episode, we talked about chocolate having like the most, I believe, the most holidays and um yeah over 10 over 10 holidays that are celebrating chocolate now is being said that chocolate could possibly be a fruit i beg to di- I, I i i really it's hard for me to believe that but let me uh explain why and it says here that the coca powder that goes into your favorite uh or assume your fave best dark chocolate bars comes from the beans or fruit of the coca tree. So if you kind of think about it, chocolate could possibly be a fruit. Now, I know dark chocolate is really good for you. I hear doctors can recommend like, you know, dark chocolate is really good for you. And because uh, uh, they always say, make sure you get your fruit and vegetables. So if chocolate is one of those fruits, 
I bet you everybody gonna start going ham on chocolate because I could eat chocolate all day, every day, all day, every day. I already told you milk chocolate, uh, Hershey bars with almonds, or uh, dark chocolate. I love my dark chocolate. Um, I, I love chocolate. I love chocolate. Uh, but that was our fun fact, so I hope you enjoyed. Now let's get it going with our first story of the day. So as I mentioned during the um, beginning of the program, singer Jaguar Wright claims that Jay-Z, too, is a monster. Let me go ahead and play you the soundbite of, of a clip when she was on the show Pierce Morgan Uncensored, hosted by uh, Pierce Morgan. Uh, we all know him, journalist, former, he was on CNN, uh, I think Great Day Britain. Uh, he's currently on the network Talk TV. And let me find that soundbite for you guys, and we'll meet you on the other side. How many victims potentially do you think there could be? Thousands. Thousands. I've talked to hundreds that I deal with still myself. I have three victims right now who are willing to give testimony about not only what Mr. Carter has done to them, but his wife as well. They're a nasty little couple. They do nasty things. What do you think happened with Kim? Keeping Port people against their will putting people on planes while they're unconscious, just like Aaliyah got on that plane, unconscious. There's a lot of things that people don't want to talk about, Pierce. Listen, like I said, Jay-Z and Beyonce are not here, uh, unfortunately, to respond to that. I know. Um, I I'm just being honest with you. You're perfectly entitled to your to your views, obviously. Uh, Kim Porter, yes. a new book claims that Diddy may have been involved in her early death. What do you think of that? I, I think people should really look into that more. I am friends with Albie Shore. I love him. I love his children. I, I knew Kim. We used to all hang out together at the Kit Kat Club back in the mid-90s when Diddy was first starting his reign. I watched that whole thing happen. And everything that Albert has been through, every attempt on his life that has been ignored by the authorities, it all leads back to Diddy. And everyone knows it. The wiretapping of the phones, putting air tag on children during visits. These are normal practices that these people do. Jaguar. Um, I've got to leave it there. I really appreciate you joining me. Thank you very much. So that was that was her on Pierce Morgan Uncensored. Uh, Pierce Pierce's show, might I say, is a it's interesting. So not trying to give too much on about Pierce Morgan, but you all know, hey, he was somewhat canceled at the time because he had criticized the royal couple uh Meghan Markle and Prince Harry um he had then uh left his job he was absent for mm, a short period then all of a sudden he was signed uh, with this new network that was owned and I believe it's still owned by the Murdoch family the Murdoch empire the same family that owns Fox News Fox Nation to be FX you you I don't need to continue on the how much influence and uh, power they have. Um, he's also he was on Fox Nation for a minute with his with his program, um, but he his show now is more of a it's more of a digital based show because it used to be I guess a, a cable outlet in or uh, across the pond over in England, um, but that they have closed I guess the department or they closed uh, the. Um, yeah, they closed the, the cable side of it and made it more digital, which, hey, is still profitable, right? Because we're living in more of a streaming uh, uh, platform anyway. So he still has a show, but his show is now consistent a lot of just odd interviews, odd interviews, debates galore, um, stuff that obviously will get views and get ratings um, because you want to stay relevant. You want to stay afloat and in the mix. Um Jaguar Wright 
uh, just to give you a little background on her, she's, um, as I said, a former uh, 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 an American singer. Um, she released five studio albums as part of the OK Players Collective. Uh, she's performed and collaborated alongside rap acts such as The Roost, Jay-Z, and Black Alicious. Um, she really hasn't done a lot of music in some years. Uh, she's always been involved in a lot of uh not bizarre but some some pretty off the wall um stories so it says here in 2020 uh she made headlines via social media regarding issues such as the trajectory of her music career her fallout with several members of the roots and her grievances with artists such as joe scott eric badu mary j blood as well as claim that her then boyfriend um common had uh, sexually assaulted her after performing a concert in the mid 2000s um she i say all that say she's always been kind of a person that i don't think a lot of people stayed stayed in contact or connected with her because it was always something she called out a lot of people obviously she didn't care i doubted that she has a huge support team within the industry that will say oh no she's saying it's facts it's accurate because now she's you hear her right now she's accusing she's accusing the carters for being just as worse maybe more than more worse than diddy um she's claimed that there are thousands who have yet come forward she has spoken to all of them she says she says she calls the pair a nasty couple who does nasty things she alleged that they hold people against their will, will and put them on planes unconscious. I mean, like she is, she's saying some, in my opinion, some paranoid stuff. Now, again, I'm a skeptic. I don't believe the first thing that I hear. Neither should you all. Um, but to put, to read you, uh, to give it more in context, um, this is an re article reported by Vibe. It says here that Jack Raw Wright has been very vocal about the disdain towards several powerful figures in the media world, mainly Sean Diddy Combs and Jay Z. Now, uh, in a new uh, uh, convo with uh, Pierce Morgan, the singer unloaded more of her thoughts about the two moguls and urged Jay to break his silence about Diddy's arrest. I quote, for four years, I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters. And the victim-making machine kept going on. Morgan asked why Ho yet to speak out about Diddy, right? Called the Rockefeller co-founder out by replying, because that's what he does. He starts little fires everywhere and forces everyone to carry water while he speaks away without a response. Uh, the change is now, Sean. You must respond. You have no choice. Harvey Weinstein, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, Robert Kelly, Sean Combs have one person in common, professionally and privately, um, Sean Carter. Now, that's spoken from her. Uh, now, when Morgan inquired about how many total victims there could be, now she said thousands. She then brought Beyonce's name into the mix, into the conversation by claiming that the uh, Houston star was allegedly in on the unjust events uh, occurring over the years. She said, I've spoken, I've talked with hundreds of the victims uh, that I deal with still myself. I have three victims right now who are willing to give testimonies about not only what Mr. Carter has done to them, but his wife as well now here's my thing here's my thing why are you all of a sudden you know murder she wrote right what, like why are you all of a sudden holding the detective hat you getting in contact with all these victims because they come to you because they're like oh you can get our story out like how how does how does victims know exactly who to reach out to because oh she will she will give us a platform she will let us know because who to say is that she's lying who is to say right obviously you haven't heard from this person in forever all of a sudden she comes out of the the woodworks boom she has she comes up with uh you know this huge headline 
and now everybody wants to interview her. Everybody wants to get her on on um on the scene. And why now you see her name all the time? Jack Wall Wright, Jack Wall. Like this is the hard part about the industry, y'all. You don't know who to believe because you have people that do have just you know pure hatred towards some other some other folks' success that they will do something this low. And they probably she probably thinks that should be me on top. That should be that exists. And then you also have the abuse of power. People then power positions that are capable of doing this stuff, but yet people would fans tend to separate. Well, they tend not to separate the 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 character from the person. They're like they can't possibly. Why would they want to do that? They have this whole. They have all this power, this fame. Why would they do that to ruin their reputation? You just never know. You never goes what you never knows. You never knows. Lord have mercy. I can't talk to you. You never can understand what is going on in an individual's mind. Uh, she then went on to say they're a nasty couple. They do nasty things, keeping people against their will. As I mentioned earlier, people putting them on planes. Um, as you all know, just to remind you, Sean Diddy Combs was arrested in New York City on September 16th, has been facing series of lawsuits accusing him of sexual assault, sexual trafficking, and engaging in other criminal activities sparked by Cassie uh, Ventura's lawsuit that occurred in November of 2023. Now, uh, now has he has now uh, been indicted with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud, and... Uh, uh, trans transportation to engage in prostitution. Now, Diddy's currently being held in, at a Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center and has been denied bail. So, obviously, Diddy cannot speak for himself or defend himself. Um, there hasn't been a lot of people that have spoken in his defense. Um, there are more people, in my opinion, that are speaking against Diddy Um and then there's people just saying no comment, which to me, it doesn't help Diddy's case at all either. Because a lot of people will backtrack, okay, photos of Diddy and all these other prominent figures, surveillance uh, videos of uh, of his parties, and oh, you know whose voice that is. Oh, you see whose picture that is. They find that individual. They ask them or her about the whole Diddy thing. They give no comment. So it's not really helping Diddy's case at all. Uh now moving more moving forward uh, as I digress from this as far as Jaguar Wright is concerned I don't know if she's telling the truth I don't know if she just wants her 15 minutes of fame because personally I didn't know who Jaguar Wright was until I heard this story and then I looked her up I'm like okay she was a you know she worked in the music industry I did not know who this individual was um so we will continue to follow up I, I truly believe this will be one of the longest cases um of our lifetime because it is involving a very high profiled uh individual um i i just again you just don't know who to believe in this case and that's and that's that's the god honest truth um everybody's gonna have their own opinion on this it's just like the you know the oj simpson case or the menendez case or any think of any high profile court cases Everybody's going to have their own two cents, have their own theories, have their own. Um, um, here's here's how my case is as has gone, starting from here to there. Like everybody's going to have a different uh, plan on how this is going, you know, end up. So, or or choosing which celebrities are involved in it. Everybody has different thoughts. So, um, it will be an ongoing conversation. We will always follow up with it here on the Aaron T. Haven Show. Um, as I digress from this story, I want to move it on to another convo and that's in regards to comedian rob snyder rob snyder for those who are um unfamiliar who he is rob snyder is i i consider an adam sandler actor <laughs> i say that because he's most of his films that he's known for being is uh with his friend adam sandler and so, hold on, let me try and find my, if I can find my graphic that I want to show. Oh, here we go. So, Rob Snyder 
has been going through a whole how do you put it like a rebranding rob schneider is hey he's successful he's made a name for himself uh, you know solo uh but let's be honest he's had he's had a crap ton of help from his close buddy adam sandler because again majority of the films he's been on were happy dad um or happy gilmore uh, excuse me, Happy Gilmore Productions, which is, I believe, owned by Adam Sandler. A lot of his films. Um, Deuce Big Old European Gigolo. Uh, uh, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Uh, what other movies has he been on? Um, 50 First Dates, I believe. I mean, he's a lot of Adam Sandler films. And and Rob had projects of his own. He's done a, um, a, a like a reality sitcom show, I believe, for like two or three years. Uh, he's had, he has a special, he had a special out on, um, Fox Nation. He had a special on Netflix. Like he's still touring. I, my wife and I, and a couple of friends, we caught one of his shows. Uh, he came to Virginia. I want to say it was maybe like last year, and eh, it wasn't bad. Uh, would I see Rob Schneider again? No, but he he had some good, you know, some good plugs, some good. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. I like that. Oh, I laugh at that one. But he's very, very, very. Um, he will let you know his true views and, and political views and values, and which is nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, um, Wanda Sykes is the same way. Uh, D.L. Hughley is the same way. Um, a lot. I mean, a lot of comedians are very uh, uh involved in politics, and they they you know will uh, add that to their uh to their comedy to their stand up. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, as you know, again, as long as you have the humor uh curve or the you know the the ending that will really get everybody uh laughing and stuff but um yeah going to um going to a rob snyder <laughs> comedy show is like going to a trump rally <laughs> i'm not i'm not gonna lie like it was um i mean it was so it was it was i i could handle the whole thing i could care less who was there but um there was an individual that was sitting behind me and a lot of stuff that he was saying was pretty offensive um, if I might say, and it was towards a, it was towards a group. I won't say the group, but it was, um, he was taking a lot of jabs at that specific group, right? Usually you want to do maybe 10 to 15 minutes max on this group. And then, you know, again, you have like a full hour and some change. So boom, 15 minutes on this group and then stretch it out and start doing pockets of other jokes here and there. But he like, he spent a lot of time on this, on this group. And that individual was a part of that group, and her friends was like, "Did you want to leave? Yeah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk out. I'm gonna walk out, and uh, but I'll come right back. I'll come. Right. I mean, like, I, if if it was that, and you that's why you gotta do your research for one, y'all. That's why you have to do your research when it comes to comedy shows. Like, I go to a lot of stand up com uh, comedy shows, and I make sure that I'm like, okay, I know exactly who, uh, or uh, I know exactly what I'm gonna um get myself into as far as like I know exactly the kind of style that they do. I know the kind of jokes that they, uh, that they share on stage. Um, I know the kind of performer they are. So I'm already aware. I do. You got to do your research prior to the, you know, the uh, performer that you got to go see. Um, but it was, a, uh, yeah, it was, a, eh, it was interesting. He's talented, great singer too. Um, but he's very, very, very openly Republican. He's proud. He's proud about uh, being a Republican proud about being conservative um that being said he's he's he makes all his jokes very 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 you know pro right leaning views in his jokes and it's like you gotta look at the broader picture like not everybody thinks that is funny but there still is a market for it he's still getting gigs he's getting paid so kudos to him i say all that because that was a lot i'm sorry guys Rob Snyder recently is receiving backlash for suggesting a uh, former NBA Hall of Famer who recently passed uh, to Kimbe Mutombo passed away from COVID vaccine. Again, not the time or the place, uh, Rob. So as I continue, um, it says here that. Um, I quote, he said, rest in peace. I'm sure this is just another coincidence. Uh, Schneider wrote sarcastically on X recently 
but I took a pass on the jab and I'm going to not let anyone uh, I know and who will listen get it either. So again, he makes this, he makes this so quote unquote, I don't even know if it was his thoughts about what, uh, what, um, how Akimbe to Kimbe Matumbo passed. First of all, he passed from brain cancer. He was battling brain cancer since I believe, uh, to either 2020 or 2022. Um, says here, you know, Snyder reposted a video of Matumbo who succumbed to brain cancer after being diagnosed two years ago, encouraging folks to get the uh, COVID vaccine um, in December of 2021. When the disease killed 1,260 Americans per day, Rob. Another quote I'll be sharing. We need to wash our hands. We need to educate each other and we need to. Uh, we need to wear. We excuse me. We need to uh, wear a mask. Um, we cannot ignore the importance of wearing a mask. Matumbo said, "We have to be there for our children. The world is not the same as it was yesterday. A lot of things are changing. The other way we can move on to be healthy is by being vaccinated. We need to help each other. Make sure each one." one of us understand the importance of the vaccine so we can live in a better community. Now check this out, guys. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm pro choice. I'm pro choice in a lot of stuff. When it came to the vaccine, I made the choice to take it. I was born always taking vaccines, this, that, the flu. That's how I, that's how my upbringing was. Okay. Since I was, since I was a baby. Now, there's people in my family that never took vaccines, right? There's people that were not too keen on taking it. They were hesitant. They were very hesitant on taking it. They took it. They're fine. The whole nine yards. Now, I understand other people will uh, uh, that um, have different health issues where it's like, hey, look, I don't know if I can take this because I have this. I have X, I have, you know, X, Y, and Z. I understand that. Um, also, I was in agreement with people that, you know, hey, if their job has said you gotta take, you gotta take it. I don't think people should have been forced to take something that they didn't feel comfortable taking. Nor do I think they should have had an ultimatum on, uh, you know, keeping their job. Or I, I, I wish like businesses or companies could have maneuvered something where they can still, uh, uh have their employee work, but just you know, until this, uh, hurricane season, you know, ends or until the storm goes by okay here's what you're gonna have to do i understand people's hesitancy so i'm 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 pro-choice on people you know choosing to take the vaccine if you did if you chose not to hey that's on you you have that you have that right to but i think that people make it so political until it's just dumb because here's the thing no one clearly knew knowledge base on this vaccine or the um the uh uh the uh covid pandemic right there was facts that people died from COVID. That's facts. Too, too many people, in my opinion, passed. So that made me say, well, look, I'm not going to back and forth or uh, uh, or hop, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, um, I, I'm forgetting my phrase, but I'm not going to stutter step this, um, this thought process. I'm just going to get it because I know it might not prevent me from getting it, but it gives me a stronger chance on not getting it. Okay. My chance, it makes my chances very small on getting it. So I'd rather get something that can somewhat be, you know, a barrier or, or blocking the, the vaccine. Because obviously, when people get, uh, when people, uh, 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 get hit with this, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a good feeling. They get really sick. So again, and then on top of that, yo, I'm like this. Did y'all go to medical school? Did y'all go to medical school? No, okay, then shut up, please. Just shut up, and stop and stop uh, uh, debating medical professionals, okay? Because look, there's some that said I rec I recommend to take it. There was some that said eh, you you won't you know it's all what your doctor says. 
So I just I hate when people always make this COVID vaccine because it's still an ongoing conversation. It's still very political. They're saying, hey, look, one side did this. Fauci is the devil. Like they're doing all this, you know, junk that is so dumb. It is so dumb. Um, I go back to this story because Rob Snyder, he just needs to shit. Excuse me. He just needs to shut up. Okay. He just needs to shut the hell up at this point. This this was this man had just passed, and then you go ahead and want to have all the limelight budgets. Like, just shut up, dude. Just shut up. Um I'm trying to uh I'm forgetting the uh the last thing it says here. Okay, so says it says here. I think Rob Snyder also added to his ex page. Uh, Takemi Matomo passed away from brain cancer. Um, uh, ex user uh, via repost. Oh, fortunately for Rob Snyder, his immune he's immune from getting brain cancer because one must pose a brain in order to have a chance for getting uh cancer in it. So that was somebody that reposted to uh Snyder's uh, uh Snyder's uh tweet. Again, this this the rebranding of Rob Schneider <laughs> is just like it's it's him trying to stay relevant, and it's it's the worst way possible, especially when you when you run your mouth during a period where the families are mourning, fans are mourning of Takemi Mutombo, yet you have to bring politics into it and be like, you know what? I know why this had happened. I mean, just again, you and your paranoid MAGA group can go sit in a corner somewhere um, and just, I don't know, you can maybe share and give them a stand-up comedy special. I know it will make a lot of money and it will be very popular like all your past specials. Not really. But anyway, my friends, as I uh, uh, digress from this, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You are listening to The Arrington Gavin Show. Do not change that dial. Become a man of distinction with Rugged Evolution Beard Care. Order our scented beard oils and beard balms to help you maintain and grow the perfect beard. Order today. Try our men's care products like the Full Body Exfoliating Cleansing Bars, Body Wash, Smooth Stash, and more. Log on to our website or download our app to place your orders. Rugged Evolution Beard Care. We're your luxury but affordable men's care line. And remember, Rugged is the new smooth. All right, family, welcome back to the Arrington Gavin Show. I am your host with the most, Arrington Gavin. Look, on our next topic here of the evening, check this out, y'all. Republican election denier sentenced to nine years in prison. Damn. I mean, what did you do in order to get nine years? Well, let me let me break it down for you. This is reported by uh, PBS. 
uh, PBS News, excuse me, um, says here that uh, this uh, Republican election denier Tina Peters sentenced to nine years in prison for voting data scheme. All right. So as you see I, uh, on the screen here, I provided her mugshot. Yikes. Not looking pretty. Um, <laughs> says here a judge ripped into a Colorado County clerk for her crimes and lies before sentencing uh, her to uh, her uh, to nine years behind bars for a data breach scheme spawned from the rampant false claims about voting machine fraud in 2020 in the 2020 presidential um, race. Now, District Judge Matthew uh, Barrett told former Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters after earlier sparring with her for continuing to press discredited claims about rigged voting machines that she never took her job seriously. Um, I quote Mr. Uh, from Mr. Uh, Barrett from the judge said, I am convinced you would do it all over again if you could. You're as defiant as any uh, defendant this court has ever seen. Uh, he told her in handling down the sentence, um, in handing her down the sentence, uh, you are no hero. You abuse your position and your Charleston. Jurors found Peters guilty in August for allowing a man to misuse a security card to access to the Mesa County election system and for being uh, deceptive about that person's identity. The man was affiliate with my pillow chief executive, Mike Lindell, a prominent promoter of false claims that voting machines were manipulated to steal the election from former President Donald Trump. Let me pause right there. Y'all, y'all talking about another fall from grace. Mike Lindell, wow. Now you talking about he he is just paranoid to the core. He is still talking about uh uh election denial or um or uh, um 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 the election was stolen. I mean, he is literally taking it so hard, spending millions and millions of dollars like Ain't only people that promote his pillows are strong right leaning outlets. He even started his own um uh far right leaning outlet. And I'm just like, bruh, just stick with the pillows, stick with the sheets. Come on, man. Like, what is what is wrong with you? Uh as I continue, uh the discredit claims trace back to Trump's to Trump himself, whose supporters attacked the US Capitol because of them and who still hints at them in his third run for president. Uh, says here at trial, prosecutor said Peters, a Republican, was seeking fame and became uh, uh, fixated on voting problems after becoming involved with those who had questioned the accuracy of the presidential election results. A one-time hero to election deniers, Peters have been unapologetic about what happened before being sentenced uh, says her Peters insisted that everything she did to try to unroot what she believed was fraud was for the greater good. I quote, um, she told the court, I've never done anything with malice to break the law. I've only wanted to serve the people of Mesa County. Now, when Peters pressed on with claims, no legal authority has cooperated about wireless devices and fraud software in voting machines. However, she drew the judge's um, exasperations. Ballot recounts showed no discrepancies he pointed out. Now, the judge also said, I've let you go on enough about this. The votes are the votes. <laughs> the votes are the votes. Let's say it again, y'all. The votes are the votes, okay? The votes are the votes, okay? The votes are the votes. One more time. The votes are the votes. The votes are the votes, y'all. So for those who are still talking about, oh, the election was stolen from President Trump. He's still our president. Yabba, 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 yep. Like, shut up. Shut up. Before you land up like like this uh, uh lady right here. I mean, you give me a break. I mean, give me a break, y'all. This lady, and she's she's cheating on her mugshot. She is smiling for her mugshot. Now, I smile 
during my school pictures. I smile when I graduate college. I smile like at my wedding photos. But if I and Lord knows it will never happen because I'm I'm too I'm too pretty to be in jail. I can't last in jail, yo. I can't last in jail. Lord knows I can't. I can't last in jail. Uh let me tell you something. I'll be damned if I'm smiling on my mugshot. <laughs> okay. Especially before I'm I'm getting ready to serve nine, nine years. Not one, not two, not three, but nine years. Let's go to ten years, okay? Give me a break, lady. Give me a break. You're smiling. She's so proud of what she did. Um, let's see here. Uh says here later the judge noted that Peters had kept up public appearances and broadcast to sympathetic audiences for her own benefit. Um Peters had the right to be defiant, he noted. But it was certainly not helpful for her a lot today. Um, let's see. It says here that Peter's actions have cost the local government $1.4 million, you hear me, in legal fees and lost employee time. The county commissioner, uh, uh, Cody Davis, estimated at the sentence hearing. So everything she did was at the, like, all this court stuff, guess who had to suffer? The people of the county that she said she was only looking for the greater good. Well, guess what, ma'am? You didn't. You looked for the worst and absolute worst. All because why? You want to have a uh, fame and fortune and uh, be a member of the whole crazy MAGA movement that's, you know, like Mike Lindell. Shoot. Maybe Mike, maybe Mike can sing some pillows while you're while you're during your nine year sentence. Okay. Like this is just this is this is y'all why so many people, especially even long uh lifelong Republican voters. I've spoken with a lot of Republican uh uh voters and, and registered Republicans, people that I mean I consider friends and family. They are literally voting for the first time ever for <coughs> excuse me, for a Democratic candidate this year. Which they said they wouldn't, they never could imagine doing so. But it's because ever since, in my opinion, Trump became very involved in politics during the Trump era, um, stuff has shifted, stuff has changed. Okay. He has created this colony, this cult like of individuals that will listen to anything and everything he spews out. And let's be honest, he's created the 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 paranoid that is being Mike Lindell. Um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Alex Jones was already Alex Jones before you know Trump, but he still helped make Alex Jones more like he helped he helped a lot of the crazies, in my opinion, be very vocal. And I hate using that word, but I'm sorry for people that really they don't think before they speak he gave them a voice he gave them a prominent voice he brought a lot of people to do some just wow stuff some wow stuff so this is this what i'm hearing right here it doesn't surprise me it doesn't surprise me um as i digress because i'm i'm have I got about like five minutes left. I'm gonna digress from this story because obviously we've spoken too much about uh <laughs> about what what what's her name about Tina. Tina Tina about to serve nine years, Lord. Nine years. Uh let me see, let me see, let me see. I will continue this story uh later on, but uh on the next show. But I do want to acknowledge if y'all haven't found out, my friends. Uh, Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark has received the Rookie of the Year honor. Uh, a lot of people didn't think. A lot of people thought it was gonna be like a kind of like a co Rookie of the Year between her and um. Oh my goodness, it was gonna be her and uh. Oh, what's the girl from LSU? Lord have mercy, I'm losing her name to save my life. Um, not Aja Wilson. Lord have mercy. Um, brain fart, y'all. Brain fart. Help me out. Help me out. Help me. Out. Angel Reese. Angel Reese. Um, 
the so uh let's see here let's see here um so at the time it was neck and neck because angel reese is a spectacular player now angel reese recently got hurt and i believe she was um, out for the remainder of the season if i'm if i'm not mistaken um but she was let me actually see uh, angel reese Looking at my time, Andrew Russo. Um, I believe she was out for the remainder of the season. Plus, her, yeah, well, the season's over for her now because they're now into the playoffs. And her um her former head coach was just let go after one season, um, which I always think is kind of hard. I don't think of I don't think one season can change a full entire um can change a full entire team uh that's just me but um but there was you know there was always the back and forth between who's better her or caitlin clark and 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 they even brought you know race into it and things like that it's i mean it's an ongoing conversation i would say they're both awesome players i mean they're both like really 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 good why can i not uh and i can read you some of her stats right here for uh caitlin clark uh recorded the most assists in a single season led the indiana f- uh, fever to their first 20 win season since 2015 uh first rookie to record a triple double um or to rec- yeah to uh record a triple double first player in WNBA history to lead the league in assists and three points three point meter per games yeah three three pms per game uh now angel reese again another spectacular player but she did get hurt towards the end i don't know if that might have you know, affected her chances. Um, if they if they keep the votes for the fans, um, it's still pretty hard because Caitlin Clark is a very influential pers- uh influential figure, just like Angel Reese, in my opinion. Um, now this reported by Fox News. Uh, ESPN analyst once anonymous voter who chose Angel Reese for Rookie of the Year to go public stand on it. Uh, Caitlin Clark was named. Uh, as I mentioned, Rookie of the Year, which surprised nobody will except maybe one person despite a historic season in which she broke numerous league records. Clark was not a unanimous selection for the award. Now, 67 total votes were cast and 66 went to Clark, the other Angel Reese. So that breaks it to you right there, y'all. That says it right there. Um, Hats off to Caitlin, obviously. Uh, says here should have been unanimous, but I'm just gonna stop there um andrea carter uh said that she is in fact did not stop there let me see i'm looking what time uh instead carter blasted the voter who checked off uh reese's name and said that voters should be revealed uh wnba voters are anonymous i'll get to you a little more y'all on the next episode because there was a couple um stories that i didn't have the time to mention to you uh with you all uh but again hey that's what happens when you have just an hour <laughs> for for a show. Do me a favor, my friends. Continue, continue to support the Aaronson Gavin Show. We are an independent, unbiased platform. We are very grassroots, rooted, uh, grass rooted program. We continue to grow each and every day. Our viewership numbers, our subscriptions, are getting higher and higher as we speak. Um, we couldn't do without you. Please keep the momentum going. Share with a friend. Share, share, share. Tune into the Aaron T. Gavin Show Monday through Fridays at 11 p.m. on WDJY 99.1 FM Straight Talk, as well as WDJYFM.com and on all digital and streaming platforms. Make sure you go out and vote. Make sure you go out your go out and vote. Your vote is your voice, okay? Your vote is your voice. So make sure you're registered. Make sure your family's registered. Make sure your friends are registered. It is a lot at stake in this upcoming election. So do your part. Get out there and vote. I'm talking to you, young people. I'm talking to you, old people. I'm talking to you, black people. I'm talking to everybody, everybody underneath the sun. Vote, 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 vote. Peace and blessings, y'all. I'll see you next time.